evening from Maryland Stadium. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. I'm Wayne Viner. Maryland rolls over Kent State. It, it could have been more. There was a game-changing moment in the third quarter when Kent State was driving, thought they had a touchdown. They score the touchdown, it gets called back by a penalty, and from there, Maryland just pounds it, takes the game, clear winner tonight, sets up the big Friday matchup with Iowa, who managed to hold on and take down Colorado State. So number five, Iowa, is coming to College Park Friday night, 8 o'clock. I'm excited. I know Bruce Mason, everybody back in the studio, is amped up for this one. I think you have to look at the fact that Leah absolutely looked the part. I know some people have talked about him being a Heisman hopeful last week. Well, if you saw this week's game, it looks a little more possible. The defense played well enough. Uh, you got to hand it to Kent State, who Mason pointed out was picked to win the MAC this year. And they go to Iowa, played pretty well last week. They had some moments this week. They had a setup, a scheme that had one-on-one -on -one coverage from the Maryland defense. And their quarterback, Crum, laid out some beautiful deep balls to the receivers. It worked well enough to make it interesting, not enough to really keep them in the game. And the final blow to keeping Kent State in the game, a fake field goal that looked like it scored a touchdown, but there was a holding penalty at the 10 and ended the drive. So Maryland does everything they need to do to set up the big time matchup back here Friday Night Lights. If you are a Maryland fan, you've got to find a way to get out here. We will be back after this commercial message. Maryland rolls over Kent State this Saturday here in College Park. We love our clients and you'll see that if you trust us at the Jacko Small Group, the big dogs from the small. Find us online at bigdogsmallfirm.com. Back on the Big Dog Post Game Show, thank to, thanks to Rick Jacklich and his crew. Of course, Viner Four Gates, the originating sponsor of the show. We're waiting for the fifth quarter behind me and to my right. I want to talk about key performers other than Leah. I think you got Demas with over 100 yards, so there's a drop or two. Uh, Rock Jarrett didn't get that much tonight. Cobbs had a few catches. Corey Deitches looked good. I was uh, impressed enough with how Fleet ran it. The tight rope run on the sideline right behind me was a thing of beauty. I like the way uh, McDonald came in. Where's number 23? Finished the game a tailback. The offensive line gave Maryland time, and you see a lot of pictures here with a clean pocket as Leah threw it, I believe, to 10 receivers. And when you complete 31 passes to 10 receivers, looking like there was no effort in it, the, the great catch by Rock Jarrett in the end zone. Good scheme today. Maryland was clicking for most of this game. It's great to see. It's hard not to actually be excited for what might happen here. No, Maryland hasn't played the Hall of Fame yet, and that's coming up. And you got number five, Iowa. You're at Ohio State. You got a trip out to Minnesota. You got everybody in the mix. Your Michigan State looks good. Michigan looks good. Your Penn State in November looks really good. You got to play all those games. You got to win your share. But right now, 4-0 looks pretty darn good. You got two more games you need to be bowl eligible, and that's the first mark here for the Loxley rebuild. Overall, impressive. It was fun. I actually liked what I saw to Kent State. I think we'll do really well in their conference. And of course, we have to run in and get to the uh, post game presser. So we will do that. We'll see you on the radio on 1300. The Met in Baltimore for Turf Talk on Wednesday. And before we leave, a shout out to the Maryland volleyball team that beat number two Wisconsin over at Comcast uh, Center, Xfinity Center last night. That was fantastic. And we hope to be back to take a look at the volleyball team in person against Penn State on Wednesday. We'll see you in the post game show. We'll see you in the press conference in a few moments. So this is uh, the extended post-game show here on the field at Maryland Stadium. Just coming back 
from the Mike Loxley presser. We got to talk to Teon Fleet Davis. Uh, we got to talk to Dante Demas and Sammy O. Uh, one thing of note, we're going to spin this around. You can see the big scoreboard that's on the way behind us. Uh, we've had injuries now uh, to not only Fonanje Gote, who was a starter war number 23, lost him in the first game, but now we understand there have been injuries to Ruben Hippolyte. Uh, I saw him after the game wearing a tracksuit, didn't talk to him. We're not supposed to talk to the players, just the ones they bring to the press conference. And we also know that we lost Brandon Jennings with a knee injury early in the Kent State game. So you're going to see some new people, new kids out there. You saw them at the end of the game. We're going to talk more about this all week. Talk to Loxley at the Tuesday Presser and get you folks an update. So for the entire crew, and thanks to Rick Jacklich, thanks to Viner Forgates, to Mason, uh, chiming in from Jacksonville, Bruce in the studio, and the entire team. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on Tuesday uh, from the Football Press.